Z for Zechariah. The Garden of Eden isn't big enough for three people. Kiwetl AG04, Margot Robbie and Chris Pine's characters find that out the hard way in Z for Zechariah, an adaptation of a posthumously published novel by Robert C. O'Brien, Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nimr. It's set in the aftermath of a decline and fall that seems to have included the use of nuclear weapons. Pockets of radiation are everywhere, even in remote rural areas, and the film includes sequences where radiation-proof suits are used and characters discuss underground bases and protocols. It's hard just to survive here. Forget about rebuilding civilization. And yet that's exactly what the film's three characters try to do. The story begins with Anne, a farm woman who inherited the place from her church building saying of a father, finding the title character and nursing him back to health. The first third or so is a two-character play. Zechariah gains strength and getting to know Anne, who's sweet but skittish and socially awkward. They form a partnership that has the potential to become something else. Then Caleb enters the picture. The addition of a third character, as ridiculously good-looking as the other two, injects a welcome note of tension into what was otherwise feeling like an exceptionally acted and photographed psychodrama about really nice people. There are racial and religious overtones to the way that N, Caleb and Zachariah try to work together, and relate to each other, and especially in the way that AG04 plays Zachariah. The character is an engineer who became a success in his chosen field, found a mate that he loved dearly, lost everything in the cataclysm, and now finds himself having to compete with a younger, more coolly charismatic white man for the only available woman. To make matters worse, Anne's chemistry with Caleb is measurably hotter than the paternal, or at least big brotherly, energy she shares with Zechariah. Race is never explicitly mentioned in the film, save for a pointed reference in one scene, but it colors, pardon the word. Every suffering close-up of Zechariah as he watches Anne and Caleb flirt and trade hungry glances. As for religion, Anne's dad built the local church and Zachariah advises tearing it down for raw material to create a wheel that will generate electricity from a local waterfall. As adapted by Nissan Modi and directed by Craig Zobel, the movie is rather coy in how it frames Zachariah's and later, Caleb's enthusiasm for tearing down the church. It represents a destruction of the old order to create something new, but also a rejection of the very patriarchal authority that both Zachariah and Caleb often represent to end and that Anne's dad represented to her before the cataclysm. This is classic issue-driven science fiction mythe-making, in the tradition of the world, The Flesh and the Devil, another movie built around an interracial triangle. The performers are committed to the director's vision, and cinematographer Tim Orr's careful framing and movement unveils the film's New Zealand panoramas. Appreciating the textures of mountains and forests, and the way muted light fills up the interior of a ruined convenience store. There are problems, too, though. One is the studied nature of the performances. Some of EU4's choices feel overly deliberate here, for the first time I can remember. Robbie fares worse. Her southern accent and mannerisms are so polished it's hard to buy in as anything other than a technically excellent performance. There's nothing outwardly wrong about Robbie's work here, but it lacks grit and spontaneity. All you have to do is picture somebody more naturalistic and maybe American and you can see the missed opportunity. Pine fares best of the three leads, although to be fair he's playing the closest thing to an action hero, somebody defined mainly by his presence in a scene, the way he moves and reacts. He's great at that. He is also, for some reason more credible as a drawling, scruffy, slightly dangerous backwoods American than his co-stars are in their roles. Worse, Z for Zechariah is ultimately too dramatically slight and brief for its ambitions, despite its sometimes labored myth-making script and visuals. And it's ultimately unwilling to truly commit to the idea of life after the end of the world as we know it. The production design, costumes, hair and makeup neutralize what the rest of the film is trying to accomplish. Anne's house looks too clean, too nice, too fussed over. Almost like a vacation home that a movie producer might stay in while convincing himself he was getting back in touch with a natural world. Caleb's been sleeping in the woods for weeks when we first meet him, but when he takes off his baseball cap, he's got a fashionable brush cut that looks like it might have been administered at a Beverly Hills salon. Zachariah's hair and beard are just as well tended, 
and the signature light tan jacket that he wears in outdoor scenes is immaculately clean, and so crisp that it seems to have been ironed right before the cameras rolled. There's a shot late in the film, after Anne has been put through the emotional ringer. That's just so wrong in its visual particulars. She's resting her head on a tabletop that's obviously just been cleaned within an inch of its life. And wearing a fuzzy cable knit sweater that might have come out of a gift box that you roll your eyes when you should be weeping for everything that's been lost.